The best way to learn art is to get good feedback often from an experienced artist or teacher, but that's not always possible. So what's the next best thing? Self critique. In this week's episode of YouTube Art School, I'll explain how to critique your own art and how to train your eye to make as much progress as possible without anyone's help. So let's get this class started. All right, class is in session. Pay attention. So self-critique is always going to be a last resort since there's nothing quite like another set of eyeballs to notice stuff that you might not. That's why we had art leads and art directors to supervise all the art teams that I've ever been on. For students in my art program, we have a big private Discord community where they can help each other and that's always going to be the best. But if you find yourself without any kind of external help, here's how you can self-critique your own art for max results. And I just want to start by saying that it won't always be possible for you to be able to critique your own art. You'll always need to have a better eye as an artist or better knowledge of a particular subject than your current set of skills. Say what? That sounds contradictory, right? But it isn't. And this graph here should explain why. Let's call this the artist growth curve. On the X axis, we have time, and on the Y axis, we have the skill level increasing over time. But these are not straight curves, and there are two of them. One for your theory knowledge as an artist, and the other for your technical skills. And as you can see, those two are rarely in sync. What this means here is that your skills improve in waves. As you practice something you've learned, you start to get better at it, and eventually, you'll level out. To keep improving, you'll need to learn more about a topic, you know, or train your eye more. And that's going to allow you to notice new mistakes you weren't seeing before, which in turn will allow you to start improving your technical skills again. And then when your technical skills start to get ahead of your theory knowledge or your eye as an artist, your technical progress slows until you train your eye more and the cycle repeats. These are two different skills, continuously helping each other to improve. This graph is important to understand because you're only really able to critique your own art when your theory knowledge is better than your technical skills during this portion of your growth. So this begs the question, how do you train your eye? If you think about sports for a moment, if you're a fan of anything, you probably know the rules of that sport really well, right? Like if you're a fan of soccer or hockey or Formula One, like I am, we've all commented on bad plays at some point. Understanding that the player or the athlete did something wrong because we know the rules of the game well enough. We can tell the play was bad, so we have a good eye. We know the theory, but we probably wouldn't be able to do any better in the same position because our technical skills are basically non-existent compared to the pros. And that's also why the team coach never plays, right? Maybe it's some fat guy, but he's still able to coach the team properly because he knows the theory well. And that's basically what you have to become, someone who knows the theory. And to do that, you have to study different topics, learn the fundamentals, learn anatomy, learn perspective, etc. I have a bunch of classes on many different topics on the channel, so you're definitely in luck and you should be subscribed or even better, you could grab my full art education program with the link in the video description. It contains all the theory you could possibly need in a structured format to draw anything you can imagine. I built this to be equivalent in content to a Bachelor of Fine Art, but with a heavy focus on digital art. For serious artists only. Yeah, the link is below. Check it out while it's still on sale. All right, so let's say you're trying to learn how to better draw anatomy, as an example. Learning the theory, in this case, would mean to start learning about the different muscle groups of the body, or the individual muscles even. It could be to learn what different parts of the body look like from different angles. Whatever you're not 100% certain about, basically, you should study. If I were to ask most of you to draw a simple box, you know, you probably could do that without looking at a reference. And that's something that you wouldn't need to study theory for. But anything else really that isn't as easy as that for you to do, you know, study it. Because it means you don't know it well enough. Your eye isn't good enough yet. So you can look at how other artists draw it, look at videos showing the process, use anatomy charts and books that go over it. And the same applies to any other art skill, really. Remember, to self-critique, your theory or your eye as an artist needs to be higher than your technical skills. Now, quickly, let's go over the actual self-critique process. You know, what would that look like? 
Let's say you've been studying something a lot recently and you feel like your eye is getting pretty good and you're ready to critique one of your drawings that you previously were struggling with. I'm basing this on what I do myself and what was generally the case when working on a team as a concept artist. There's usually going to be three attempts. Your first attempt should basically be the finished drawing. You know, what you initially felt pretty good about after spending a good amount of time looking at references and relying on the theory that you could remember at the time. From there, I would usually recommend that you shelf it for about a day, moving on to something else preferably. Then the following day, once you're able to get a fresh new look at it, imagine yourself as the art director looking at someone else's art. Using more references, try to find a number of issues with the art. There should always be issues, by the way, and list them out before going back in again for your second attempt as you try to address them all. And if you haven't done so up to this point, you should really flip your canvas often to make sure that you're not getting used to mistakes. Flip it horizontally, vertically, do it often. Like I said, the process is going to take three attempts. So you'd want to do this whole thing again once more before you call it done. If your theory is in fact better than your technical skill, with each attempt, the drawing should be getting better and better as you iron out mistakes and basically act as the art director for your own work. In my opinion, from giving feedback to hundreds of students that I've mentored over the years, three attempts is usually the sweet spot. Two is often not enough to notice issues properly, and more than three attempts is usually not really worth the effort, getting, you know, diminishing returns. So make it a habit to do this for every drawing. It's going to be a pain at first. Let's not sugarcoat it, but I will tell you, you get used to it pretty quickly, and it's absolutely necessary to be able to critique yourself properly and improve. Now, the hardest thing to be able to critique your own art, though, might be to control your emotions. That certainly was the hardest thing for me at first, for sure, when I started as a game developer. It was painful, almost, to get feedback on my art. If you're not used to getting feedback, having your art basically trashed by an art director isn't exactly fun. It really jabs at your ego, but I got used to it, of course, like you do for everything. Eventually, it just becomes this normal step in the process where you're aware that your first version isn't ever going to be the best one, nor the second. Everything needs revisions, always. Revisions just make things better. So the sooner you can get used to redoing part of your work, starting over when it's needed, the faster you'll progress. It's really a mental hurdle more than anything else. And the worst thing you can do, and I was also guilty of this myself, is to feel emotionally attached to a part of your work, you know? This just makes it so much harder to rework something, even when it would really help. Unfortunately, even if you spend hours on some part of a drawing, it doesn't make it any more special than the rest. It's never good to feel like you shouldn't rework something just because you spent a lot of time on it already. And everyone does that at first, so check yourself. Until you call something done, it should always be in your mind something that you can throw away. This takes some practice, obviously, but try keeping those feelings in check. One way to look at it that's helped me personally is that the process of drawing, not the drawing itself, but the process is what counts. That practice you keep forever. The drawing really is just the result of that practice. So try focusing more on the process than the result. The process is really what's most valuable. And well, that's going to be it for this week's class. It's not the easiest thing, but you can definitely critique your own art. And now you know how. So if it was helpful, let me know in the comments as usual. And before I end the video, if you haven't already, you can grab my custom brush set full of all my favorite brushes with the link in the video description. And it's free because you've been a good student. All right, share this video with a bro, won't you? And make sure that you're on time for next week's class. You won't want to miss it. Thank you.